All right, quiet. Quiet for rehearsal. Go! Before the lights are set up, or the cameras can roll for a movie, someone has to find the perfect place to shoot it. Hi, I'm sorry to bother you. I'm a film location scout with Paramount Pictures. Uh, we're That's Nick Carr's job. You may know his work from Spider-Man 3 or War of the Worlds. His name doesn't usually appear until the end of the credits, but when a new film gets the green light... Hey, are we moving that lift? He's on the front lines. Does it start when you get handed a script? Yeah, locations departments are, after accounting, the first departments that get hired in New York City. And my whole job is about looking. It's about staring at the city. And you start seeing these little things that stand out as different. Drew, go to two. Carr is part of the location team for the new film by Sopranos creator David Chase. The movie takes place in the 1960s. We needed a period look. And he just absolutely fell in love with it as soon as he drove through. So Pearl River, New York, is standing in for a New Jersey town. So Sebi's House of Subs doesn't really exist. That is our creation. Um, that we, we built a few sets on town. There's no school for location scouts. Yeah, I'm on my way. Most stumble into the job. We have to be diplomats, accountants. You know, we have to have a good eye aesthetically. Like Ilt Jones, the six foot six Welsh-born Los Angeles-based scout, who's lined up locations for films like Pulp Fiction and As Good As It Gets basically got to launch a charm offensive on the uh, on the populace and hope that they uh, they, they bend to your will <laughs> money helps <laughs> the scouts greatest challenge a screenplay that calls for something that simply doesn't exist there's always something where it's a complete figment of the writer's imagination inception is a case in point the script for the Oscar-nominated film included a dream sequence in which a freight train barrels down the center of a city street. And of course, downtown doesn't have any train tracks going through it, so hmm, what should we do? How did you settle on this location? We liked it because it was a controllable section of street. So they shot along Spring Street and created their own train. So we built our own train on top of a semi-tractor and, you know, and it had two or three carriages. It looked great. Good enough to fool a drunk Jones met on the set early one morning. The drunk guy goes, is that a train? And I said, yeah, that's a train. He goes, man, I got to quit drinking. <laughs> the best locations can play more than one part. We're at the Griffith Park Observatory. L.A.'s Griffith Park Observatory was the scene of James Dean's knife fight in Rebel Without a Cause. But Jones also scouted it for a scene in the first Transformers film. Please, let this work. L.A.'s Union Station has had a versatile career in the movies. You couldn't recreate this now if you wanted to. No, it's one of those don't make them like that anymore moments. The cavernous ticketing hall played the part of a futuristic police station in Blade Runner. More recently, con man Leonardo DiCaprio passed bad checks here in Catch Me If You Can. Welcome to Miami Mutual Bank. How may I help you? So this is another historic cinematic location. That's right. This is uh, 55 Central Park West, uh, seen in Ghostbusters as Dana Barrett's apartment building. Sometimes, Nick Carr says, a location can influence a director to alter a script. The building chosen for the climactic scene in Ghostbusters is next door to a church. So the church originally wasn't part of the script. That's right. Um, originally, it was just centered around the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Well, there's something you don't see every day. Attacking the apartment building. They scouted the building, and hey, why not use the church? So what happens here? The Stay Puft Marshmallow Man actually literally steps, steps onto it, prompting line. Nobody steps on a church in my town. Everybody in this restaurant is thinking of that scene in the movie. We interviewed Carr in another famous movie location. Recognize it? It's the table in Katz's Deli where Harry met Sally in the 1989 film. Oh. Are you okay? I don't know. To me, that, that's put it into pop culture legend, you know? Manager Jake Dell says it's made the deli a tourist attraction. We have people coming in 
want to sit at the table and want to want to fake it a little bit. Oh. 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 Everyone wants to to be Meg Ryan, I guess. I'll have what she's having. Back in 1971, location scouts came knocking here at the Norton home on Staten Island. My father answered the door and he said, we're from Paramount, we want to film a movie. And he said, no thanks. And he closed the door and went into the living room. My mother said, who is that? I said, oh, guys from Paramount, they want to film a movie. So she got up and opened the door and said, wait, come on back, come on back. So, and the rest is history. The Norton house would become the Corleone's home in The Godfather. Looks like a fortress around here. Is this where they shot the wedding scene? This is where the wedding scene took place. The Corleone's daughter was married on the Norton's back lawn. <laughs> and the Don himself died in the tomato patch, now the Norton's swimming pool. So they built this wall here. Yes, they wanted to get that compound effect. Mm -hmm. Ed Norton's mother kept a scrapbook during the filming. This is Brando and Pacino in your backyard. Correct. Wow. That's actually our lawn furniture, too. <laughs> it's our, our table, yeah. <laughs> <They're right. laughs> the Norton house is now up for sale for $2.8 million. 40 years ago when they were filming, did you think people would still be driving up here? Oh, absolutely not. You didn't. I mean, it's a movie, and you don't know how popular the movie's going to be. It could have been a, a flop, but it was, turned out to be one of the most famous movies in the world, so forever. So what will be the next great film location? Nick Carr is always looking, posting his finds on his blog at scoutingny.com. This one has drawn the most interest. So how did you find out about this place? I got an email uh, that there was a location I absolutely had to see at 5 Beekman Street, and that I would not believe what I was seeing. So what is this exactly? Uh, this is a building that was built in the 1800s, and it has the most beautiful atrium in New York City. Uh, it goes up a full nine stories. Wow. And what's even more incredible about it is that for the past 65 years, it has been completely shuttered up. Imagine a hideout here, a chase scene or maybe a dramatic fall. This is a building you want to see in a movie. Yeah, this is a building that is waiting to have its moment in front of a camera. <laughs> the Academy doesn't give Oscars to location scouts, but they also dream of discovering a star, of finding that special place this, I mean, this is incredible. It's, uh, that could become a screen icon.